What is up, investors? Today, I'm going to walk you through the most important document that you need to understand if you're going to analyze companies in the stock market from a fundamental perspective, and that is the consolidated income statements, sometimes referred to as a statement of operations, but more broadly known as a profit and loss statements, because these have revenues or sales on the top line. And they're always followed by net income or profit on the bottom line. And the way you know you've gotten to the bottom line is there's always two black lines at the bottom of the report. The first thing you need to understand when you're looking at these documents is what figures these numbers are denominated in. In this case, they are in millions, and this is always near the header of the page. And so this mobility line here has a 14 here. This is not $14. This is not $14,000. This is $14 million. So you need to add six zeros after uh, this line, and you are going to add six zeros after all these lines. That means this automotive line, this is not $33,000. This is $33.931 billion. Some smaller companies happen to be in the thousands and even smaller companies will just simply have the report in the figures as written. You just want to make sure you know what you're looking at in this sense. Now, the next thing you want to understand is what periods that you're looking at here in this first column, we're looking at a third quarter. So this is for three months and we have back in 2019 and then and now we have in 2020. So you're getting a year over year year view for the third quarter. The second column is typically either a six month or a nine month view. In this case, we're looking at nine months from 19 over 20. So you can get a larger view of the company. For this video's purposes, I am going to only focus on this third quarter here for Ford Motor because we have a quarter where they actually lost money and we have a quarter where they actually made money operating the business. And by the end of this statement, you're going to easily understand exactly what is going on in these documents. Now, the first line in all these profit and loss statements or statement of operations is always going to be sales or in this case, revenue. Revenues. And Ford Motor actually breaks it out into three different divisions. Some companies just lump all their business units into one. But we see here Ford is giving you visibility into each one. We see here for Ford Credit, we actually went down from $3 billion down to $2.77. $4 billion. So you can see here when they break it out here, whether or not sales gained or declined in certain business segments, that's usually followed by a total revenue line. So they add all of these numbers up and that gets us to total revenues back in 2019 of $36.99 billion. And we see here in 2020, that actually went up to $37.5 billion. Now that's not the full story. We have costs and expenses and that always follows revenues. And so we have cost of sales. And in Ford's case, these cost of sales is going to be the cost of the metal and the screws and all the little parts and things involved in making these cars. And we see here that Ford spent $32.28 billion in 2019, and it actually went down to 31.22 Three billion dollars. So, in my opinion, that's the first thing you should take away from when you're looking at a document like this is that Ford's revenues actually went up. They went up on the total revenue side. They also went up in their most key aspect of their revenue, where they went from 33.931 up to 34.7 billion in automotive, but their cost of those revenues actually went down. And so that's actually quite a positive. Now we have other expenses here. This is selling administrative and other expenses. This is all the back office and the people, while they don't build the cars, they don't necessarily are involved in these cost of sales. You still need these people in the back office running things. And so that's another expense that you recognize. We see here in 2019, it was 2.6 $1 billion. And that actually went down as well 
to $2.266 billion. Ford is obviously in a cost cutting sense because you notice that our revenues are going up, but our costs are actually going down. Ford credit interest operating at other expenses went from $2.368 billion down to $1.661 billion. So all costs at Ford actually went down in the most recent quarter. Now, what is followed here after we have our total revenues and then we get a total cost and expenses, just like our revenues, we add up all these numbers and we had $37.251 billion in total costs and expenses in 2019. And now in the most recent quarter, we actually had $35.15 billion worth of expenses. Now that gets us down to an operating income. And this, in my opinion, is one of the most important spots in this entire document, maybe even more important than net income. And I'll explain. So operating loss or income in this sense we take our total revenues here at $36.99 billion. We minus it by our cost here. These are all the costs associated with running the business. And we get to an either an operating or a loss. When it, the number is in parentheses, this is a negative number. That means this is negative. And this is $261 million loss because if you take this number and minus it by $37.251, you get a negative two. $261 million. So Ford actually lost money operating their business in 2019. Let's take a look in 2020. They earned $37.5 billion worth of revenues, but they only spent a $35.15 billion in costs. That means our operating income is actually positive at $2,351,000,000. billion. This is a key aspect of the report because when we walk through the other expenses or other credits that we get, we see we have some interest expense on automotive debt. We have interest expense on other debt here. We have other income here, which is occasionally maybe Ford makes investments in other companies, things like that. They sometimes might have other income or might lose income in other ways. They have equity in net income with a affiliated companies here and you have some provisions for income taxes or a benefit in this case this is actually a benefit when it's in parentheses and then finally we're getting down to a net income number you can see here i talked about income taxes i talk about equity in affiliated company i talked about other income which they're not explaining here i talk about interest this is all stuff not necessarily related to making Ford Mustangs and Ford F-150 cars. This is why I look very closely at the operating income side because these figures down here before we get all the way to our bottom line of net income, these can bounce around. Taxes can change. Equity investments can change. Interest rates can change. That is not at all necessarily related to how well Ford is operating their business. So I take very close look while we're not at the bottom line here at the operating income side. Sometimes I stop right here and analyze the company from this sense. And I'll show you why here. Take a look at this 2019 third quarter where I just showed you. Here was our revenue here. Here was our expenses. That mean we spent more money than we generated in revenue. That means we lost $261 million operating the business. Well, what was interesting though is the company earned some interest here. They got some other income here at $534 million. They had a $442 million benefit from income taxes. And what, and lo and behold, does that lead to? a net income of actually $425 million. So operating the business of selling cars, uh, you know, giving credit to dealerships and customers for buying those cars actually lost Ford money. But when you factor in interest, taxes, and other income, the company actually made $425 million. And so if you wanna analyze Ford from an operating perspective, Take a look at the operating income. If you want to factor in these other things that aren't related to operating the business, 
take a look at net income. I just wanted to show you that and how interesting that is. Now, in the most recent quarter, we saw that we made $37.5 billion in sales. We had $35.15 in cost that led to a profit of $2.351 billion. Now, in this case, Ford did have some other expenses and other credits and other places where they've made income. They also had to provide or provisions for income taxes here at $366 million. That led to a net income down here at $2.385 billion very close to our operating income. Anytime net income is very close to operating income, you can go ahead, in my opinion, and take this net income number and analyze the company from that sense. Anytime you have some a situation like this where the operating income is actually negative and the net income is positive or vice versa, I would usually sway toward paying attention to this operating income side of the balance sheet. So hopefully this helped you out. If you have any questions about the, this document and how to read them, leave me a question down below. I'll get to them as quickly as I possibly can. Thanks for tuning in today. Hopefully this helps you with all your investments.